good morning. Um, I'm proud to be here uh, with uh, the announcement today, which I'll mention in a minute. Uh, we've got Mayor Curry. I want to thank him. Do we have the representatives that we have? Okay. So we have um, uh, Lyman Duggan, Sam Garrison, Jason Fisher, and Ford Bird. I have Kevin Guthrie, Director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management. And then we have Dr. Ken Shefke. He's the Chief Medical Officer for the Florida Division of Emergency Management. Uh, one of the things that, that we're seeing, uh, you know, when you go back a couple months, obviously there's been a big vaccination drive in Florida. We've done almost 4 million senior citizens really focused on the seniors and the at-risk population. Uh, you saw that throughout the country. Um, there was the hope, well, we, we fully expected that to provide protection against severe illness. Uh, but there was also the hope that that potentially would create an effective shield of immunity to make it so that infection waves were, were not going to be uh, as significant as we had seen in the past. I think on the former, if you talk to any of the hospitals throughout the state of Florida, I think they will tell you that the overwhelming uh, majority of the people that they are admitting uh, into their hospitals uh, for COVID uh, are people that had not been vaccinated, that the vaccinated population is less likely to be admitted uh, into the hospital um, if they get infected and we are seeing breakthrough infections. Uh, and so from that perspective, preventing severe clinical outcomes, uh, we've seen a lot of protection for a lot of vulnerable people uh, and that has made a big, big difference. Now what you haven't seen is widespread vaccination limiting waves. It's not just in the in Florida or the whole South, it's all across the world. You look at Israel, they're one of the most vaccinated countries on planet Earth, and they're having their biggest uh, wave of infections that they've had throughout the whole pandemic. Uh, obviously, Florida, other Sunbelt states, but even like Hawaii, very vaccinated. You know, we're the most vaccinated state in the, sun, in the Southeast. Um, we've got over 85% of seniors fully vaccinated, uh, but yet you see with this Delta variant, more contagious, very easy uh, to transmit, and it comes really in waves. And so as we're looking at that and say, okay, vaccination is clearly helping reduce serious illness. It's reducing your likelihood of being hospitalized, uh, but you also have people who are being hospitalized. So, so what tools do you have that makes the most sense? And one of the things we've been talking about recently is doing monoclonal antibody treatments such as Regeneron. We've done that in um, different hospital systems have done it. They're doing it here in Northeast Florida. Uh, but it was something that the more we talked about it, the more people had questions. A lot of people had not even heard of it. And so we see an effort to be able to supplement that effort here in Northeast Florida and other parts of the state. We'll have additional announcements very soon, uh, partially to be able to get more people in. Uh, and we're gonna bring in a lot more Regeneron into, into Florida, which I think is important. Uh, but also just to raise awareness that this is something, this is the most effective treatment uh, that we've yet encountered for people who are actually infected uh, with, with COVID-19. And the way it works, I mean, the, the, the core group of people that benefit from this uh, are folks that are at the most high risk uh, for severe illness from COVID-19. So elderly people, people that have certain comorbidities, you know, kidney problems, uh, diabetes, morbid obesity, immu immunocompromised. Uh, this, if applied early and properly, has the ability to reduce your likelihood of being hospitalized uh, by 70% in clinical trials. And I think if you talk to people that have had it uh, in Florida, most people will say that if you do it early, it really does help to resolve the symptoms. And so what we're gonna be doing here today is uh, deploying a, a rapid response unit. Uh, this will start starting at noon. We'll be able to uh, deliver uh, Regeneron monoclonal antibody treatments to folks. The, the key to this is if you're in one of those high risk categories and you become COVID positive, doing it before the symptoms get very severe is when it's most likely to work. And so Part of it is some people don't even know that this exists until they end up getting admitted to the hospital. At that point, it's almost always too late for this to be effective. But part of it is just kind of a natural human instinct. Maybe you feel some symptoms, that's positive, but you don't feel that bad. So you figure, hey, I'm gonna clear this. If you're high risk though, and it progresses, then you've missed your opportunity to have this be really effective. So that early treatment is really what the Regeneron and the monoclonal antibodies represent. So that's really what we're doing. So they're gonna start by just taking referrals from the health systems, 
here in Northeast Florida, but we are going to be moving to uh, allowing this to be done uh, on, on even an, an individual basis coming in uh, and making appointments, and we think that that's something that's very important. Clearly, this has now been, been employed uh, on an emergency use basis since uh, the end of last year, so we have a lot of time to watch what's happened, and there's clear benefits to this early treatment for keeping people out of the hospital and reducing mortality. And this is also true whether you're vaccinated or not. I mean, obviously, if you're vaccinated, uh, we think the data in the hospital shows that your chance of being admitted and having a severe illness is less than if you weren't. Uh, but at the same time, we are seeing people testing positive in higher numbers than I think most people anticipated, and that's just not in Florida. That's really in places like Israel and other places around the world. So if you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, if you're in those high-risk groups, you can still do uh, the monoclonal antibody. The only thing, the only issue I think that doctors would tell you is if you're, if you're not vaccinated, high risk, you come in, you get infected, come in and get it, absolutely, you get the treatment. You have to ask the physician at what point in the future, if you do want to get vaccinated, do you have to wait because there's antibodies and they, they want that to be able to clear. But that's really, um, you know, at the end of the day, the, 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 only, the only major thing that, that you need to look at. So. Who are the high-risk groups that would most benefit from this? Obviously, elderly populations, uh, people with chronic kidney disease, diabetes, morbid obesity, cardiovascular, or chronic lung disease, people with sickle cell. Uh, those are the folks that have infected with uh, COVID-19 may end up seeing significant consequences and could result, of course, in a hospital admission or worse. So if you do it early, this has a great chance to resolve uh, those symptoms short of you needing medical attention. And that's really, at the end of the day, uh, what it's all about. So uh, we want to be able to do all we can to be able to do. Now, what we're going to do is, so we have this here. This is helping uh, relieve some of the, the pressure, because I know they're doing a lot in these health systems. Uh, so this is supplementing that, and, and we'll expand as needed. And really, it's just a matter of you, you can do it through IV, or you can do it subcutaneously. Uh, if you do it subcutaneously, it's easier to do, so you can probably get more people through if you have the appropriate setup. Uh, so we're going to be expanding as much as we can, and we may use other footprints uh, in Jacksonville. Then we're also looking beyond and throughout the state of Florida. There's websites. HHS has a website, for example, about where you can get monoclonals. The problem is if you go on it, some of these places, some of them have it, but they just aren't administering it. And, and others others don't necessarily have it. So what we're looking at is, are there gaps in certain parts of Florida where we can bring some of these mobile units and then be able to offer this to folks uh, who get infected uh, in early treatment? And I think this is going to be something that has just got to become part of the standard uh, of care as you go forward. Uh, this is going to be with us for a long time. I mean, I hear these politicians say they're going to conquer it and end it. Uh, you know, it's not going to be eradicated as we've seen, you know, yes, different iterations. Um, you know, the vaccines obviously are helping people avoid severe outcomes. But you're going to continue to have, have this, you know, go in the different patterns. So understand if you're in those risk groups that this is really something that you need to be thinking about if you end up with a positive test. So we're going to be doing that. We're also going to be doing strike teams to be able to bring it into nursing homes uh, when you have, if you have some nursing home infections. And we've seen that. Nursing home residents were some of the first people to be vaccinated, and I think you saw a huge decline in cases in nursing home residents, uh, but you are seeing you know, more of that now in different places. And so, so if you do have somebody test positive, obviously you can help that resident. You can also treatment for the most vulnerable. That had more people known about this in the event that, that you are infected, uh, that, that we can. So I want to thank. Um, and we look forward to being able to kick this